There we go. There you go. Wow. Nice. There we go. That is a good start to the morning. How do you like that hog? Oh, man. In my opinion, the pinnacle of largemouth bass fishing is busting out meat sticks. Oh, I just had another one, Jerry. And cracking jumbo bass like that in heavy cover. Today, Jim Winder and I are going to look at some of the strategies for finding largemouth bass in some of their favorite habitat. That's heavy cover, and we're going to share with you some of the riggings that we use to pull fish like this out of cover like that. There's a lot of different riggings available today to be able to target big largemouth and heavy cover like this. And one of the most innovative and I think uh, efficient ways that I've seen so far to fish bass in this heavy cover is a rig like this. This is called a Tokyo rig from BMC. So check this out. It's got this little wire shaft on it. And you can see I've got a couple little tungsten weights here. And what the idea is, it's a weight forward system. So when that goes in to the water like that, you can see the weight leads the bait through the heavy cover. And it goes through there extremely well. And the reason I'm using two weights instead of one in this particular case is there's a lot of kind of gross vegetation on the bottom. So I want one of the sinkers to penetrate and I want the other to be uh, pointed on, on the end to come back up through the cover. So with this system, we can penetrate just about anything you can imagine, and it also keeps the bait just slightly up off the bottom. Oh, Jimmy's got a big monster on. Whoa, Whoa. that's a big fish, man. Wow. Come here, buddy. Boy, it's beautiful. Boy, the way it moved water, I thought you had a monster. Come here, buddy. You know, we live up in the North Country, and uh, and a lot of our lakes, we have really big weed beds. And these weed beds are interesting in the fact that, because in some bodies of water, they grow from as deep as 25 foot of water to really shallow water cover like we're fishing right now. But let's get her back in the water. Hey buddy. There we go. One of the biggest things is to catch fish out of weeds is to first off to figure out what depth contour they are in the weeds. We just got in this lake and we started fishing shallow, but uh, you know, weeds in this particular lake grow out to eight or 10 foot of water, but in a lot of the lakes that we fish in the North Country, they go really, really deep. So the key is getting on the right depth contour, which weed depth you're fishing. One thing's for sure, largemouth bass and weeds go hand in hand. Now, Depending on the body of water you're fishing, there could be all different types of weeds in there. There might be wild rice and lily pads like we're fishing here. In deeper water, you might have some of the cabbage species growing in that say eight to 10 foot range. And then in the deeper stuff, you might run into milfoil, coontail, or even cara and algae, the sand grass people often call it, that largemouth can use as well. But one thing when you hit a body of water, it's worth looking at different types of weeds because often bass can have a preference for a specific type of plant and that's where you'll find them. So anytime you hit the water, be sure to check different spots with different types of weeds and chances are if you sample through most of them, you'll find some fish. You know, what's exactly what you're saying, Jer, I, you know, it's so interesting that you can go to a given body of water and a lot of times the fish can be really keyed in on a specific type of plant. And these lakes here, we'll be fishing a little bit later here. It'll be uh, like deeper coontail mats that'll be out in you know, six to eight foot of wa water. But the thing is, at any one given point in time, these fish are moving back and forth in these weed beds and they're finding the right weed for that time is key. Right now it's that late summer time frame, late August, where you can have, the, the mornings are starting to get really cool and the, uh, the days can still, can of course still be in the, in the 80s. And uh, this is a, a time frame when basically, Everything's in play. There could be fish in, you know, 15 feet of water. There can be, can be fish in the slop. So uh, one thing I will say though, however, is when you've got these dark water lakes like we've got right now, a lot of times the biggest bass you'll find in the lake are gonna be in the heaviest cover and they're often very shallow. There's one. There you go. Ooh. Ooh, there's one. Oh. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> It was the same thing, boy. He he just launched it when he fish grabbed it and he started swimming sideways. That's where that high speed reel to catch up to him. I'm not kidding you. The fish, before I got him, 
The fish had probably swam five feet before I set the hook on the fish. I mean, look at that. He just launched the bait, too. So this is what the Tokyo rig looks like out of the package. It's got a, a closed ring on the eye of the hook, a little barrel swivel, and then this wire shaft with half a swivel on it. So what the idea is, you can use just a regular flipping weight, you know, and of course just you choose weight based on um, how dense the cover is and how deep you're fishing. So what I'll do is I'm gonna start out this little 3 8 VMC flipping weight, 3 of an ounce. I'll slide that one in and just for the heck of it, because this water's so dirty, I'm gonna put a glass bead, put a little rattle in between the two of them. And then I'll just take the second one and I'll drop it in the opposite direction. So now you can see that whether the bait's coming up through the cover, the, the weight is in the, in the way that it, will, it won't catch cover. And when it's penetrating through the cover, it's the same way. And then I've just, that little glass, you don't have to do that, but that little glass bead makes a nice little, little noise and I'll just take pliers like this and I'm just gonna make a little bend in that wire and that'll keep the weights from popping off. You know the Tokyo rig is a fabulous hooking rig. The thing is is with that lead separated from the hook it's sort of interesting if you have to get used to it when you look at it it looks a little bit sort of clunky and a little odd but boy I fished it through a lot of different types of cover from bulrushes, pads, deep uh, milfoil, coontail mats, and it, it's a great bait to fish that type of cover, no question about that. Here we go. That's Got a nice one. Ooh, there's a real one. Ooh. How do you like that? Man, that is a good hooking bait. <laughs> Stuck them. Stuck it to them. Look at that. What a quality fish, man. 